Welcome along, everyone, to the 1UP Superstar Series, round number 5 of 30. We're at the America's Heartland here at Kansas Speedway. And as we wait for Ryan Caggiano to return to the booth, we wish him well. We're once again joined by Jeep Kansak once again. And I ask you this, this is a very momentum-based racetrack. We had a thrilling finish here a year ago. Will we will we see something similar here to this this year? Or will we see some someone force their hand a little bit more like we saw in the Nitro National Series race yesterday? Yeah, you know, it's going to be a, a momentum-based race again. I feel it in my heart <laughs> because it's just going to be a lot of pushing down the straightaways and a lot of trying to keep your speed up through the corners. Um, the draft is going to be a big factor today. Uh, it's a big track. It's a high-banked track, So and it's smooth. So it's just going to be uh, uh, an interesting race to see who can carry their momentum all the way to the front. So at one pit stop to deal with this, this race, we can give you the full field of 42 cars set to do battle here at Kansas. We have Joshua Michaels with his first career pole position in the number 26 Royal Performance Motorsports Toyota. He's alongside Jared Polanski, the Atlanta winner, hoping to make it two wins on two mile and a half this season. J.D. Martin lines up third, trying to save his season alongside the 500 pole sitter, Christian Vargas, Jeff Bolton lines up fifth alongside rookie William Brock, Stephen Hunter, the Monza winner in seventh ahead of Arthur Xavier, and running out the top ten is Nick Ortiz and Andres Molina, who lost that Monza race in a nail-biter of a finish. Mm -hmm. Looking at that top ten right now, who do you see as the biggest threat to take victory here today of that top ten? You know, I'm going to say that Martin is the, the biggest threat. I know that Polanski is really, really fast just about everywhere, but I think that that 66 car, uh, I think that he's hungry. I think that he really wants one of these wins. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be watching that car today for sure. So that being said, as we always say, the cars are lined up on the grid and we're ready to go racing. We're going to bring you the green flag shortly. The green flag is next here at TRN. This is the 1UP Superstar Series live from Kansas Speedway. Stay tuned. The pace car already on pit road leaves us in the hands of Joshua Michaels and Jared Polanski. The green flag is out and the race at Kansas is underway. Michaels pulls out to a pretty solid lead over Polanski, but it's still anybody's guess who's going to lead the first lap because we're only going into the first corner here as Michaels establishes himself as the race leader, but we're already seeing some cars go two and three wide at the start of this one. Yeah, Jared Polanski's not going to take long to try to make a move on the bottom of the track. I actually saw him just barely kiss the wall going into turn one. You don't want to do that, but it looks like it hasn't hurt. And that 26 stuck on the outside at this point with the 66 is going to go up there and help him. It's going to be a drafting race, folks. So you really are going to want to watch for which lines have the momentum, which lines are making the runs. And, and, and right now, that bottom line has pulled out ahead. Jared Polanski takes the lead after Joshua Michaels lead lap number one. That's his first lap led of the season that was not in the Pensacola 500. So good run from the 26 to rebound after a disappointing Monza race where he finished 34. His first finish outside the top 10 all season long. But now it's Jared Polanski back in control in a mile and a half like we saw this one coming. And he now leads <laughs> after two laps are complete. And now he's starting to get a pretty good gap of pulling out on Joshua Michaels. But now M Michaels is under fire from JD Martin in the 66. He's looking for second and look out for the two Revolution Racing cars right behind them. Christian Vargas and Steven Hunter are making a charge early here. They absolutely are, you know, and it's looking like uh, these guys, if they can line up, they'll be able to chase down that 18 car pretty easily. Uh, so far though, the 18 car, like, like we all expected, is looking really, really good today. Uh, just drove away from these guys. No draft necessary for Jared Polanski. But right now, jo it's Joshua Michaels' job for Jared Polanski to hold up J.D. Martin and especially Stephen Hunter, who has only one win on an oval in his career out of his four wins, and that came at Daytona last July. So it'll be an interesting story if, if Hunter can shake off his oval curse. He's won plenty of road races, but he's only won on a plate oval as we got a crash in turn one and the caution flag oh, is out on lap number five let's see where the stars oh anderson reed with damage oh, and it looks like brayden saul was collected in this one making his first start of the season is brayden saul and anderson reed's day is gone up in smoke yeah. on lap number five i'm curious to see where this whole mess started but tough break for anderson reed the rookie who did such a good job at bristol his day is done early at kansas 
So this is where it's hearts, and yep, he gets tagged oh, by Brayden wow. Saul, who just gets pushes him up into the wall there. A tough break for Anderson Reed in the wrong place at the wrong time. Brayden Saul also looks like he's got some damage on the right hand side of that of that seventy eight dodge. But Anderson Reed definitely took the worst of this one. His day for sure is over after just five laps here at Kansas Speedway. So we're on board now with Anderson Reed here. And it looks like he's crossing the line, doing a pretty good job holding his own on the high side, but it just looks like he tries to turn down and the 78's yeah. already there. Oh, that's a Ooh. that's a shot into the outside wall right there from Brayden Saul, and that's gonna end Anderson Reed's day quite early here at Kansas Speedway. He was trying to make the top 30 in points before the cutoff, and that will not happen here at Kansas. He is, will finish outside the top 30 in points. He entered the day 35th in the owner's points, and that will not likely improve after this incident on lap number four. And that's put us under caution flag for the first time at Kansas Speedway. We're cycling through lap number six, starting lap number seven now. With Jared Polanski out in front, Joshua Michaels in second, J.D. Martin third, Stephen Hunter, Christian Vargas round out the top five. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it's going to be interesting to see what Michaels is able to do on this start because he's going to have some pretty open track. He's going to be able to anticipate the start. Uh, we'll see if the 66 is able to help or will hurt that 20 five car or is it 26 i can't even tell right now it is 26 i knew it in my mind and i switched it up but either way i'm, I'm struggling with the numbers folks i'm struggling either way i'm curious to see how this start is going to go single file this time uh and they're about to go green here so we don't have to wait much longer pace cars off the green flag is back in the air and we're underway once again here at kansas speedway on lap number nine of 81 with Jared Polanski out in front, and it looks like a couple of cars are going to try and test their luck on the high side, but for the most part, it looks like everybody's going to stick to the bottom here. With Jared Polanski once again stretching his lead out to pretty handy levels, but behind him, there's a hungry pack of cars waiting to strike, and none more so than Joshua Michaels in second, looking to rebound from a disastrous outing at Monza. And J.D. Martin's just trying to save his season. He's currently 36th in points in both oh driver's boy. and owner's fronts. So he needs a good day to get himself into a locked-in position. Because remember, this is the final race before the current year standings decide who makes the field. Yeah, and it looks like J.D. Martin's going to maybe try to sneak low. It's not going to happen right now. There's a car down there. But... This 26 car, I was really surprised to see the 18 jump out so far ahead. You'd really think that uh, Michaels would have been able to catch up or at least stay with the 18 car on the start. But, man, Jared Polanski is just flying right now. Keep in mind that the Royal Performance Motorsports team is a satellite operation to the Kings Motorsports operation. They're, they've got similar equipment, but the Kings Motorsports cars just have that little bit more in them. Yeah. And that's probably why Polanski was able to pull away from Michaels so easily in that shared alliance. With J.D. Martin now running third, trying to revive his season after a dreadful start to it. And right now, he's doing a pretty good job running in third ahead of Stephen Hunter, last week's winner. And it looks like Hunter's going to try and close the gap between them, but Martin's going to try and make a move on Joshua Michaels before he can get there. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to work out this time. He's going to slip back into the draft there and just try to follow that 26 car right now. I feel like if these guys are able to work together and push each other a little bit, they'll be able to catch. Of course, as soon as I say that, the 66 jumps low with the help of the 51, and they're just going to go right on by the 26 car, it seems. Hunter's going to make and it three wide for second. Take Three oh, wide for second, and it looks like the 51 and 26 are going to swap positions here with J.D. Martin staying right <laughs> in the middle in third place, trying to figure out where to slot back in line. But now we have the two winningest drivers in the series back running 1-2 once again in the series, and St as Stephen Hunter moves up into second place, and he's getting ready to chase down Jerry Polanski for that lead. Yeah, they're not quite a second behind him right now with all this too wide racing. They're just punching a bigger hole in the air, though, slowing them down. Uh, looks like they're going to figure it out here, except this <laughs> J.D. Martin. He's not too happy with that Stephen Hunter up there because he, he, he wanted to go to the front on his own, and Stephen Hunter had other ideas. That being true, and now Stephen Hunter has the task of chasing down Jared Polanski. He gained a tenth that last time by... 
but it's still a six-tenth of a second lead for Jared Polanski yeah. as he stretches his advantage. Here at Kansas, he has a win earlier this season on another mile and a half at Atlanta, but these tracks could not be any more different. Atlanta is rough, bumpy, and abrasive. And this track at Kansas, much much smoother, much faster, and you can bet that the falloff will not be nearly as bad as it was a few weeks ago at Atlanta. Oh, but don't look now. That 51 car, he gained another 10th on Jared Polanski, our leader. Man, you have to say, I mean, statistically, those two drivers are the best in this series based on their wins. And uh, it's showing right now that that 51 car, he knows what to do. He's going to the front. This race has been dominated by Toyota so far, but look, here come the Ford contingent with Ricky Freeman Jr. leading the charge in the 0-1 with help from Jeffrey Finguy and Freeman's teammate and team owner, Justin Hutchinson, in the number 10, who scraped the wall coming out of the tri-oval, but he doesn't seem to have slowed him down any. Put Freeman and Finguy past Joshua Michaels now into the top five. Yeah, that was a good move from those two. They both kind of worked together to get by on the bottom. That's the quicker way around, the shorter way around, and they used it to their advantage handily right there. Joshua Michael seems to not have a good car today, he, at least in the long run. He's dropping back in quite a hurry. He's fallen back to sixth, and he might soon lose that position to Justin Hutchinson Speaking as of. well. Speaking of battles for position, here's the battle for the lead. Stephen Hunter has caught Jared Polanski in the 18. They're going to go bumper to bumper for the lead. It's, cl it's close to contact, but not quite. As Polanski leads the way off a of turn four to complete lap number 18. Will he lead lap number 18 in the number 18? Yes, he will. <laughs> Put the 18 in the lead to complete lap 18. To start lap 19 as Jared Polanski leads the way ahead of Stephen Hunter. They've pulled quite a ways ahead of Martin and Freeman in the battle for third. Yeah, you know, all those numbers, that's that's not my strength for sure, but I'll tell you a couple numbers they are doing really good right now. 18 and 51, they're leading this race, and that 51 car is fast right now. I mean, he just... He just fell off a little bit uh, as I started to say that, but he drove right up to that 18 car like we haven't seen for this entire race and was right on his bumper pushing him through the corner. We're going to see if that car is able to rebound. I'm sure that what happened is he heated up his stuff a little bit and got real antsy trying to get by the 18 because he knew he had a shot, and uh, he's just got to catch back up now. Look at Ricky Freeman Jr. He made his way up into the third now past J.D. Martin, yeah. our shoot, our our superstar shootout winner back in early March who won the shootout at Pensacola on the last lap pass. Could he do something similar here today at Kansas? He's got to get through two of the best to make it happen here, though. But it looks like he's cleared Fing Guy and Martin, and he's starting to close in on these two a little bit. Oh, man, and this 51 car, Steven Hunter is working on Polanski right now. Boy, oh, boy, man, I just watch him come out of those corners, and he just stays right with him. It's incredible. And all there comes the move going into one. They're side by side, and the 51 is easily going to slide right almost clear. I really thought that was going to continue. His run just kind of stalled out on the bottom, but they're side by side and here comes the 01 car. Oh, that was oh, almost was contact close. between the 18 and 51, and that's allowed the 01 of Freeman to catch up to these two. And Finn guy as well in the 92 back there. This is going to become a five car battle for the lead here shortly. But Polanski led the lap once again, but Stephen Hunter is probably going to get the edge on oh, him yeah. through the corner here, and he will definitely be clear when they come off the turn two this time. He slides up front, and now the 51 car is in the lead. What does Polanski have for him now that he's in dirty air? Now he's behind somebody. Hasn't been like that since lap one. In fact, it, even on lap one, he had clean air because he was on the outside pole. So this is new for the 18 car. He is discovering things about that race car that he has not experienced yet. And I am, I, he's fallen behind a little bit. I'm, I'm nervous. That Stephen Hunter, man, he is quick out in front. Hunter looking for his fifth career win in this series would extend his record for the most all time. And it would be the second time in his career that he posts back-to-back -back wins. He did it last year at the road courses of Kyle Lamy and Spa Frankerchamps last season. And he's looking to do it at Monza and at Kansas this time around. But he's got, he's got about 60 more laps to hold off Jared Polanski. I'm not counting out anybody in this <laughs> top 10 yet. 
Yeah, and if there's somebody that you should never count out, it's definitely Jared Polanski. He is back, and he is on fire. I mean, he's trying to pass that 51 card. This is a fantastic battle we have going on right now. And keep a lookout for Jeffrey Finguy in the 92. He's also one of our series' best, and he's he's got two wins under his belt, including one this season at Bristol, and he's now on the charge, making gains on the t two leaders, making us a three-car battle for the lead now as we enter lap 26 of 81. Yeah, and Jeffrey Finguy has followed Ricky Freeman Jr. all the way from 13th and 14th starting positions in this race. They had assistance from a caution with a single file restart, but uh, other than that, they have driven up through the field, and now they're both there fighting for the lead with the two Toyotas. And Finguy now makes a move Ooh. on Polanski for second. I'm curious if this is going to stick going through one and two. It looks like they're going to be side by He's side coming off a of two. But actually, no, Finn guys He's just got it. He's going clear. for the lead. He's going for two for one here. Go making a move on Stephen yeah. Hunter, but he was just too far back that time to make the move. But he, saw, he solidifies his position in second, and he'll now mount the charge on Stephen Hunter. These are three of the series' best right here, going at it for the lead early on here in the race at Kansas. Yeah, Finn guy really, he thought better of it there, which was good. It's it's too early to be sending it deep on people uh, going into three. It's only lap 28 right now, but uh, he's got to work on Stephen Hunter now. He's he's there, though. He's keeping up. This The draft is really what's making this racing so good, folks. I mean, they're just able to stay there. Here comes the 92, making a move on the bottom. He's always oh, going to get to his quarter panel. This is going to be interesting going into turn one. Side by side with the 92 in the preferred groove, and he's going to easily take the lead from Stephen Hunter. Give the lead to Jeffrey Finn guy in the 92. He's yet to win on a mile and a half, but he's shown his strength on these circuits in the past, and he's out front right now. Put Jeffrey Finn guy in the lead of this race after 29 laps have been completed, as it looks like oh. Diego Yepes is headed to the garage with an engine issue to end his day on lap 29. Tough break for the Rookie of the Year contender who came into today 13th in points, so this will hurt him big in his efforts to make the 12-man mm. playoffs, but right now the battle between Fingai and Hunter is just getting even more electric. You're right, and as as long as that if as long as there's a car working on the bumper of the leader, those guys behind are going to be able to catch up because when when like for example here we got Finn guy in the lead and Hunter working on his bumper. Finn guy is driving in defense mode right now, which means that you're not setting your best best lap times at all, and. And because of that, it's slowing the two of them down, and it has allowed Jared Polanski to catch right back up to these guys. And, and Ricky Freeman Jr. is back there too, and he's gaining time on these guys. So uh, really, this is this is a battle for the ages right now. <laughs> Jeffrey Finn guy continues to add to his lead. It is now about two-tenths of a second over Stephen Hunter, but that gap starting to diminish a little bit as Hunter sends it into turn one in a big way, catching onto the draft of the 92, and starting to pull up closer, 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 closer. Will he make a move? No, he mm. tucks back in line. But as we complete lap 32, this proves that we've got three hungry drivers in three very good race cars, all in contention for this race win. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I'd even extend that to four cars that are really uh, in contention here right now that we can see. Of course, uh, we do have a pit stop coming up uh, pretty soon. I think we're approaching halfway very quickly in this race. Um, but we're, we're going to have to see how the pit stops play out and who comes up top uh, after that. You know, it's not always they all go in and come out in the same positions. In fact, it's almost never like that. So uh, we'll have to see how it goes. But right now, this 92 car is looking stout, and the caution is out at this point. For Michael 40, McCuskey in the 47 40 car, the rookie driver in for the Rock Car Racing Team has had an issue in turn one, and that's put us under caution for the second time here today on lap 34. It's Michael McCuskey involved in this one. We'll see what happened to him in a moment. It might have involved Braden Saul for a second time. I'm not sure. But I saw it, the oh, 78 cool. off pace once again. And I can only imagine it was because he got into the, this 47 car here and severely damaged that machine. And as the field comes in for this round of pit stops, this will t take us to the end of the race under caution. 
and we'll keep an eye on these pit stops before we show you a replay of what happened to Michael McCuskey. We'll to get recap you on these pit stops coming up here. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see where everybody comes out. You know, it's a busy, busy pit lane, as you can see right here. There's Jared Polanski as one of the, one of, one of the better pit stalls. Of course, uh, Joshua Michaels got that number one stall. He's able to launch right out of the pits. Let's see who is going to get out first. There is the leader who came into the pits. He's coming out. Uh, it's Jeffrey Finn guy. Ricky Freeman Jr. is going to advance a couple of positions too. And... Wow, so he's really the big gainer of the of the leaders. And Joshua Michaels had another slow stop, as, as well as Christian Vargas. They dropped down the running order. And Jeff Bolton, who started fifth, had a disastrous stop. He's going to come out in the 20s as we now take move our focus back to Michael McCuskey, and we can see what happened to him. So here's Michael McCuskey, comes out of the trioval, and it looks like this time it's Daniel Bouchard who gets oh, in the no. hill, sends him up into the mm. wall, and from there, he's just along for the ride. It's a tough break, but it's a similar situation to what we saw earlier of Anderson Reed and Britton Saul. Just going for the same spot on the racetrack, just nowhere to go for both of you. Yeah, you know, and it was uh, it was almost like a blind spot situation there, uh, similar to last time. Almost the same spot, in fact. That 47 car, really, really tough break today. We're on board now with Daniel Bouchard. You can see he gets the left rear of McCuskey Ooh. and just sends him up the racetrack, and from there... He's just along for the ride at that point, like we said. There's just nowhere for him to go, and Daniel Bouchard just, just the, the instigator of this incident by no fault of his own. McCuskey was just going for a spot on the racetrack there. But still a tough break for all those involved, especially Michael McCuskey, who was making just his third, third start of the season in that 47 car and hoping to get as many points as he can. This will severely diminish his hopes as Patrick Smith now comes out of the pits after taking some damage earlier on in this race. He's taking this caution flag as an opportunity to repair that damage. He comes back out on the racetrack and he will start at the rear of the field. As the lights are out on the pace car, we will be going green next time around with Jeffrey Finguy as the race leader. Yeah, you know, and, and Jeffrey Finguy and, and his buddy that he's driven up through the field with, Ricky Freeman Jr., uh, they're going to lead this race. Now, in the last restart, we saw Jared Polanski drive away from the rest of the field for a couple of laps. He stayed out there. Um, will we see that again this time? I'm not sure. We're going to find out shortly, of course. Uh, will Ricky Freeman Jr. play nice with the leader? That's, uh, of course, a question. I think that last time we saw uh, uh, the 26 car play nice with Jared Polanski, though it ended up hurting him. Uh, the 26 car is not even in the top 10 anymore. So we'll see what happens here. Ricky Freeman Jr. Uh, might be able to make a, make a shot uh, towards the lead, and then Jared Polanski uh, might be able to take advantage and get it back. That car was really great on the short run in this race so far so uh lots of storylines to focus on here at the front of the field and i'm excited to watch it as we take the restart another thing to keep in mind you're asking a lot of ricky freeman jr to play nice with anybody he's a, <laughs> one of the most aggressive drivers we have in this series and as we take the restart at lap number 38 freeman's tucks in behind and it looks like the first car out of line is Ooh. justin hutchinson in eighth making a move on his teammate Blair in the 19, that's for 7th, but right now Jeffrey Finguy's got a lead and he looks to be able to hold on to it, at least for the first half lap of this restart. But Freeman is doing his best to hold off the two dominant cars of the early goings, Polanski and Hunter. They are battling for position as well, as Freeman is yeah. going to make a move for the lead of this race. Hey, you called it. Freeman's down on the bottom, and he has got a train of cars behind him pushing him to the front. Ricky Freeman Jr. is going to handily take the lead here with help from Jared Polanski and Stephen Hunter. It seems the poor Jeffrey Finn guy was left out to dry in that situation. Put Ricky Freeman Jr. into the lead of this race out for the time being. This all one car has had some, some pretty good runs this season. He enters today sixth in points. So he's had a very good season up to this point, and he's going to add on to that by leading this lap, but that oh. might be the only one he gets for a while. Because oh. here comes Jared Polanski with a bumper swat to the back of him saying, you've had your turn out front, I want to take it back. <laughs> and even after just one lap out front, Ricky Freeman Jr. now loses the top spot and the runner-up position in oh one my. go to the two Toyotas of Polanski and Hunter who have t asserted their dominance once again. You know, very greedy those Toyotas are. They didn't let the Fords have much fun out front. Um, but they're, you know, Stephen, 
uh, Stephen Hunter and Jared Polanski. They're, they're back 1-2 again here on the short run. Now, this run to the finish, if we don't get a yellow, is going to be longer than the run that we just had uh, from the first caution to that last caution, which uh, brought us to about halfway in this race. So we're going to see if these cars start to fall off like they did. Uh, and they're going to be racing each other hard. Here comes Steven Hunter on the bottom. Side by side for the lead as we cross the halfway point. Entering turn one, Steven Hunter is going to try and take the lead back, and it looks like he's going to be clear of Jared Polanski easily off of turn two. Hunter is back in front wow. once again, but Polanski is still right there. And don't count out the, nine, the 01. And now Nick Ortiz has made a move into the top five. He's passed Finn Guy as well to move the, nine, the 91 up into fifth position as a matter of fact the entire finish line motorsports team has made their way into the top 10 with freeman in third ortiz fourth blair in sixth hutchinson in eighth this team is going to be a force to be reckoned with as they have three out of four cars right now in the top 12 in points right now you're right about that, and it's because their drivers are all a force to be reckoned with. I hear every single one of those names, and I'm like, man, they're definitely running up front at somewhere at some point. Uh, but right now, it's all about that 51 Toyota. Uh, he's starting to drive away from Polanski a little bit. I don't know if maybe they've both decided that it's time for them to save their stuff. They they recognized that the last run, they, they were good on the short run, but not quite as good on the long run. Uh, but these two are driving away while they're not battling each other, and that's really good news for the two of them. Uh, they'll be able to battle it out at the end amongst themselves without any interference from those pesky Fords. Checking in on fastest lap, a Revolution Racing car has the fastest lap, but it's not the one that's dominating the race right now, Stephen Hunter. It's his teammate, Christian Vargas, in the 54 that holds the fastest lap at a 28.04. And he's going to hold off Jared Polanski right now is Stephen Hunter. Nick Ortiz has passed his teammate, Ricky Freeman Jr., to move up into third position. Nick Ortiz has been a strong contender all season long as well. He enters today second in points. We look back through the rest of the top 10. Blair has moved up into 5th now with help from that 83. He's passed J.D. Martin for 6th. Now, Freeman is back to 4th. Ortiz 3rd behind these two, battling it out for the lead between Hunter and Polanski. Yeah, speaking of battling it out, here comes Polanski on the bottom. They, I guess I was wrong about those two agreeing to uh, hold off on battling for a while because they are side-by-side side coming all the way around this race course. Again, right bold now. of it's... you to assume that Jared Polanski would be nice to anyone. <laughs> he is also <laughs> yeah. one of the more aggressive drivers we have in this sport, but he's also very calculated. He knows when to use his aggression and use it well, and he's using it well here on Stephen Hunter. But he's also drawing Nick Ortiz into the fray as well. This could be a three-car battle for the lead here soon. Yeah, and you really don't want Nick Ortiz to be in the battle uh, with you because <laughs> you're probably going to lose the battle. But uh, if you're Jared Polanski, then who knows? <laughs> but look at this. Nick Ortiz going to the bottom. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't quite enough of a run to make it, but he did spook that 18 car, it seems, because now they've both lost a little bit of time to the 51 who's still in the lead. Uh, we'll see if this is if they kind of push. Yeah, they're going to push each other. Get back up to Stephen Hunter and uh, and you know don't count out Ricky Freeman Jr. Uh, who is lurking right now. Nick Ortiz trying to make a move. He's got just barely on the quarter panel. Going to send it down into turn one. See what happens here. Wow, Nick Ortiz really just just drove right past the 18 car. Jared Belansky. Man, this is going to be exciting to see what that 91 machine can do uh, with Stephen Hunter, our leader. Closing in on 30 laps to go in this race, and we still got a lot of cars in contention for the win. I would say the entire top four back to Ricky Freeman Jr., and I still wouldn't count out any of the cars in the top 10 right now, because remember, Finn Guy was leading earlier, and he's back to 9th. I wouldn't count him yep. out by any stretch. Joshua Michaels, the pole sitter's fallen back to 13th, but he's still in the mix, only three seconds behind, and all these cars really have a good shot. If something were to happen and a caution flag were to come at the right time, It'd be interesting yep. to see as Polanski now makes a move on Nick Ortiz to try and take second place back. Yeah, you know, and you have to remember that the 01, the 92, and the 83 have all come up through this field from, from 13th, 14th, and 15th starting positions. So uh, anything is possible here at Kansas, we're, and we're seeing it right now. There's just, uh, there's just plenty of cars that are up there. 
who started farther back. So, so you're totally right. This whole top 10, uh, they're only about two seconds apart from one another, and uh, they've all got a shot. So as the top three settle themselves out a little bit here, they're starting to be a little bit more equidistant from each other as Hunter continues to lead the way ahead of Polanski and Ortiz Freeman starting to fall back a little bit. It's now down to just these three cars for the time being, barring another incident, of course. But Stephen Hunter continues to lead the way. He's going for back-to-back -back wins for the second time in his career, his fifth win overall, both of which would be records if he were to achieve that. But he's still got about 27 laps to go, and anything can still happen, of course, because it usually does here in the 1-Up Superstar <laughs> Series, as we like to say. Because here comes Jared Polanski. He's making another run at it here, slowly but surely. Yeah, you know, and this is an interesting situation here with the with these three because they're they're kind of minding their business right now, but there's flows in these races, you know. Eventually, they're going to close back in on one another, and they're going to be racing hard again, and then they're going to have to take a breather, you know. That's what's happening right now. They're taking a breather. It was intense for a while, and now they're just hanging out. They're making sure that their cars are still working. They're kind of saving their stuff a little bit. But at some point, that 18 car, he's going to catch back up to the 51 and say, I'm here again. And then it's going to be on from there. Closing in on the end of lap 54 of 81. We're past half distance. We're closing in on 25 laps to go in this race here at Kansas Speedway, round number five of the schedule. And, of course, remember, after this race, the owner's points from this season will guarantee cars into the field instead of the points from 2020. As they're coming up to lap Patrick Smith in the 07, they're catching up to him at a very fast rate of speed. I'm wondering who Patrick Smith will impact more. Will it be Stephen Hunter or will it be Jared Polanski that Patrick Smith holds up more? Because they're all oh, Toyotas. They're all for different teams. And... Oh, my goodness. They're... He's going to hold up both of them. In fact, he was able to block both the lanes successfully, it seems. But Jared Polanski is going to be the one to get out ahead of that. Patrick Smith was just in the way. Uh, uh, somehow multiple times in that one little instance there, allowing Jared Polanski to take the lead from Stephen Hunter. And Stephen Hunter has lost a significant amount of time after that. I'm sure that he's not very happy with that 07 car in this moment. They're all driving Toyotas, but they're all driving for different teams. Yep. So there's no team orders between any of them right now. As Jared Polanski takes the lead back from Stephen Hunter, Nick Ortiz falls off a little bit. It's down to these two right now. As Hunters tries to make a make inroads on Polanski's lead once again, but I'm just wondering if it was t that was the deciding factor of the race right there was mm. that lapper of Patrick Smith because now Polanski's in the lead and he I very much doubt he's going to want to give it up. Well, you know, I would doubt that uh, Stephen Hunter is, is going to give it up either. I mean, it, you know, you look at these two drivers and they're both. I mean, they've they're both one and two on the most wins ever in this series. They know what they're doing. Uh, Steven Hunter has dealt with that before, and he is able to just stay right there with him. As long as he's in the draft of that 18 car, I think that Steven Hunter has a shot at this race because, I mean, right now he looks like he's even faster than the 18 car. He just got a little unlucky with the lapper being in front of him there. Both of these drivers, of course, are also trying to become the first driver this season to win two races. We've had four winners in four races. These two are among that group, but they're trying to separate themselves from that instance and trying to become the first driver to score multiple wins in 2021. And both of them would be deserving winners if one of them were to pull off the victory. But re but only one of them can get there. And right now it's Jared Polanski with a nose ahead of Stephen Hunter as they come off a of turn two, closing in on 20 laps to go. Yeah, and something that I'm noticing right now is that the 91 car, he has no help. Uh, Nick Ortiz, he's just back there all by himself. He's a, uh, 1.7 seconds back, uh, and then the next car behind him is a second from him back, and that's only causing him to be farther and farther away from these cars. I, I'm thinking if it goes green here, it's going to be a duel between the 18 and the 51 for the win because there's just no help from behind. Yeah, and the next car back for Nick Ortiz is his teammates, Blair and Freeman, and they're about a second off of him. 
So as we close in on 20 laps to go, it looks like if we stay green the rest of the way. Oh, and I see it. I see the, the 26 of Joshua Michaels on pit road because oh, wow. his engine have expired. The pole sitters day could be over early here at Kansas mm. Speedway. That will hurt his chances of making the playoffs here. We. We're only five races in, but it's never too early to start talking about the playoffs. Because I think I see the caution yeah. lights come on, and I believe really? we're, we have a caution oh on the boy. racetrack. Yes, we do. We have a big caution. Richard oh, Herman wow. with some heavy damage. Andres Molina with severe damage. Brayden Saul. Kyle Vaughter is with damage. Henry oh, Thomas no. got a piece. This is a heavy crash that has eliminated at least two drivers and maybe as many as five. We'll see what happened here shortly, but this wreck has severe, has changed this race instantly right here. Yeah, that this crash really prized the bars open, uh, uh, allows Nick Ortiz and his old team up there to catch back up to the leaders. We're going to see there's a lot of damage on these cars. We're going to have to really take a look at this. Uh, unfortunate, unfortunate for Kyle Vaughter, it's just in the couple laps there, both of those cars are taken out of contention by two different things happening at once but really an unfortunate situation every time there's a crash so the rpm team will have two drivers finishing deep in the field as vaughters and michaels fall victim to this crash they're putting all their hopes now into henry brown who's currently in the top 15 so at least they can salvage something out of that but as of right now these cars are all the worse for wear as we will try and bring you Close to what happened here in this accident on lap 63 of 81. We are under caution for the third time here today at Kansas Speedway. Caution on the Speedway. Jared Polanski is your leader. So it looks like this is where it begins with Molina going to get a run on his teammate Nelson Reeves. There's Bobo Jones in the fray as well. And oh, he just sends Ooh. it in deep. That's a teammate. Wow. You shouldn't be doing that. Nope. And then Bobo Jones gets into piece of oh, And then Richard Herman is just a, a victim. Henry Thomas gets wow. piled in. And a huge impact for Richard Herman. And Andres Molina especially. Those cars took a severe impact. And Kyle Vaughters was just a victim here of contact and then you see henry thomas collect collecting the wall on the front straightaway i want to see where vauders got his damage because it looks like he got past the initial contact i'm wondering where he got his damage from and all this so kyle vauders is trailing this incident he's past those two Oh, but Henry Thomas is oh. slow in front of him, and he's just got nowhere to go. He just rams into the back of the eight car, and from there, he's just along for the ride. There's nowhere for him to go, and now he's got a lot of damage on his car. Henry Thomas with a lot of damage as well. Man, this is just a hard break for all these drivers, especially Andres Molina, who had such a good run going at Monza last time out. So here's Joshua Michaels. He was running in 13th, and the engine just oh. lets go on him. He, he ran it as long as he could, but that engine just wasn't able to last 81 laps, and his day will end here at Kansas Speedway. He started on pole, led the first lap, but he, he, he had not had a very good day here by that team's standards. He was running in 13th, which is pretty good. That would have put him pretty solidly in the points contention, but this DNF will set him back a long way. Absolutely, and you know there there must have been something wrong with that motor uh, for this whole race because it just it was just off for the whole time. Now looking back towards the start of this incident, we'll get you one last replay of what happened here. So it looks like Bobo Jones was going to make a move on Andres Molina, and then trying uh, to avoid contact to the wow. 86, he just makes contact with the 17, his teammate, and then Richard Herman just had nowhere to go. Neither did Henry Thomas. Boy. Richard Herman took a wild ride in that crash. I, uh, I, obviously, he's he's okay, drove away from it. But, you know, that, that was just, it was a really bizarre crash. He went just straight on. But uh, we, we've watched all the replays, and we're going green here. Two cars on the bottom lane. Uh, Jared Polanski, who's been really good on the restart so far in this race, starting right in front of Stephen Hunter. And they're both going to get around those two on the bottom very swiftly. Th those, Both of those cars, they're actually holding people up 
They're going to be back. moving chicanes all for the rest of this race as yep. the two Toyotas are are followed by a Finish Line Motorsports train of cars 3, 4, 5, and 7 right now with only uh, J.D. Martin oh. separating them. But right now, here comes Hunter and Blair with a run on the 18 and the 91. They're going to go side by side for both of those positions. It just looks like Polanski's got the momentum off the high side. He'll lead this lap as we approach 10 laps to go in this race. Yeah, Stephen Hunter's got to be careful. Nick Ortiz behind is really wanting to take that position so that he can try to fight Jared Polanski for the lead. But Stephen Hunter has done a good job of blocking that so far. And we'll see if the move comes here. Oh, it comes from Nick Ortiz for second place. That's exactly what the 18 wanted to see side by side behind him. That's that's like a gift from above here at Kansas. It looks like Hunter is going to be able to nose out the 91 at least for the time being, and that's allowed J.D. Martin to close back in as well. Martin looking for his first top 10 of the season, and he's running fourth right now, which is a very good run, as Ortiz now clears Hunter in the battle for second place. Now, what can the 91 do in chasing down Jared Polinski? Because I don't think Stephen Hunter is done quite yet. Yeah, I remember picking that 66 car to do really well today at the top of the show. And uh, he's he's starting to come back in this thing. He's running fourth. He's having a solid day so far. He's about to get passed on the inside. But uh, meanwhile, up front, Nick Ortiz, he's solid in second place right now. Now he's just got to catch up to that 18 car. The only one that's been able to catch the 18 is Steven Hunter, who knows that fact, and he's going back to second place. He wants to get up there, and he wants to beat the 18 car for the win. Catching Jared Polanski is a very tall order, but if there's anyone yeah. who can do it, it's Steven Hunter in the 51. These two have been battling for wins all season long, and they're just and they're getting ready to continue that here at Kansas Speedway as we approach 10 laps to go in this race. Coming off a of turn two, we're going to get 10 to go next time by, but now Steven Hunter's fallen back a little bit, and now Nick Ortiz is the man leading the charge on Jared Polanski as we come off turn four to take 10 laps to go at the line. It's anybody's guess who's going to win this race, because now if we get another caution, we're guaranteed a single-file restart the rest of the way. Yeah, and this guarantee or er, this doesn't guarantee anything, but Nick Ortiz, he is able to uh, drive on the offensive now, which is really important because he's not having to defend from that pesky 51 car behind him. He's able to drive forward, he's able to power forward, and he's able to try to drive down that 18 car. You know, before with the 51 on his bumper, he was just trying to stay ahead of the 51. Now he's able to drive head on uh, in into the lead, hopefully for him. Uh, but we'll see if it works out or not because, again, that 51 car, he's the only one who's been able to catch Polanski. With, with closing in on the end of this race, and Jared Polanski got a pretty handy lead, could he tie Stephen Hunter's record yet again and get <laughs> his fourth career win, or will Nick Ortiz get his second? Or could Stephen Hunter rebound and get win number five on his career? That would be an impressive feat if he could do it. And he's making a, oh boy. He's, he's starting his charge now. He's inside Nick Ortiz for second. Put the 51 back in second place. Yeah, you know that he it's amazing the level of competition in this series and to get two wins in a row like Stephen Hunter would for the second time in his career uh, if he were to go up there and win this race that's just it, it, absolutely impressive because you know this series is so competitive there's so many different contenders every single week there's so many different winners that we've had in the past so Stephen Hunter establishing himself as one of the the one of the if not the best driver right now though he's behind jared polanski who is up there in the ranks with him of course uh but we will we shall see if stephen hunter has anything to say about jared polanski winning this race we're closing in now on six laps of racing to go and stephen hunter is closing that gap a little bit jared polanski can't be feeling too comfortable right now the gap is the same as it was before about a quarter of a second but stephen hunter is closing it in little by little i would expect to see a full-out duel for the win in the final few laps between these two these two are possibly the greatest drivers we have right now yeah i'm very excited to watch this battle because the 51 car has caught up to jared polanski and he is really quick right now we remember uh from the runs before that is faster on the long run so it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out because nick ortiz is there too so it's it's forcing uh stephen hunter to drive a little bit defensively as the fifth oh man he's just gaining a little bit of time here and there 
He's not going to be close enough for a move this time, but next time on the back stretch, watch out. Keep in mind that the we've only had one driver in the series history score back-to-back -back wins before, and that was Stephen Hunter a year yeah. ago. So if he were to do it again, this would be a big confidence booster to that 51 team and a and proof to the rest of the field that if they're going to try and take this championship, they're going to have to go through the defending champion first as we're closing in on three laps of racing to go. Yeah, that... That car is looking really stout right now, but it means nothing if he's not the one in first. And right now, Jared Polanski's in first. Of course, Steven Hunter is working on him. Oh, man, that was a big block from the 18 right there. And it's not even going to work out going into one. Here comes Steven Hunter on the bottom. Side by side for the lead, coming through one and two. But it looks like Polanski's going to get the nose on him. Coming down the back straightaway, will Hunter try again or will he tuck back in and focus on the next corner, three and four, trying to get around Jared Polanski. This is going to be a battle for the win, a battle for the ages right here as we come in to take two laps to go this time. And here comes Hunter on the inside. He's going to try and do it once again. Yeah, Stephen Hunter, he's really working that turn four exit. He's able to get a huge run down the front stretch. The last time it didn't work out, Jared Polanski was good on the outside, but they're going to be side by side coming down the back stretch, which is really going to help the 51 car because he's got the preferred lane going into three. Coming to the white flag this time, Stephen Hunter is going to try and make history once again and become the first driver to win back-to-back -back races in 2021. The first driver to win two races, period, in 2021. White flag is out. We're on the final lap. Wow. Stephen Hunter is on pace to take his fifth career win, and that would be a, a momentous occasion for everybody involved there. They're coming up to lap Kyle Vauders. I'm, I'm wondering if that will play a big factor oh, here. I oh, no, it will! It won't play too much of a factor, though, as Hunter's underneath Kyle Vauders. Coming off a of turn four, here he is, Stephen Hunter. He's going to take the win for the fifth time in his career. Stephen Hunter's done it. He's won at Kansas Speedway for his fifth career win, his, his second win in a row, his second of 2021. And this is a huge sign for everybody else in the field that the King is ready to defend his title once again. Boy, oh boy, what a run to the finish there. He drove down Jared Polanski and passed him outright. He was better through three and four, and he just got that run. He tried it once, didn't work, tried it again, and made it happen on the final lap. Takes the lead and wins the race. Absolutely very well done from Stephen Hunter. Jared Polanski will take second. Nick Ortiz will come home third. Justin Hutchinson made a rebound late to come up to fourth. J.D. Martin with his first top ten of the season in fifth, ahead of Blair in the 19 and sixth. Jeffrey Finguy faded to seventh at the end. Kevin Carter made his way into the top ten late. He'll take eighth, ahead of Halleck in the 84. And Christian Vargas bookends the top ten with his teammate, taking home the number ten finishing position. At the end of a very exciting race at Kansas Speedway, we're looking forward already to our next race because <laughs> if there's any indication from this race, it's a, it's a clear sign that Stephen Hunter is more than ready to defend his championship. And with that being said, we've got an off week coming up for the One Up Superstar Series, but keep but we we're not taking away all the action from you. We've got a Nitro National Series race next week from Sonoma, and then in two weeks' time, the both series return at Phoenix Raceway for race number six of both of their seasons. We hope to see you there as well. Final thoughts of any kind here from Kansas Speedway. You know, I'm really thinking that that 51 car is going to be tough, really, really tough to beat this season. Uh, Jared Polanski is going to be one of the try guys trying to beat him, of course. But uh, right now, they're the class of the whole field. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly how that plays out. But they're my championship favorites as of right now. So from Duke and second for myself as well, we say goodbye from Kansas Speedway, and we say congratulations to Stephen Hunter, who, who firmly puts his name in the history books once again with his fifth career win on the 1UP Superstar Series. He is once again the greatest of all time.